Let's try to uh, solve this numerical uh, question involving a time series where uh, majority of it is uh, going towards the estimation of the parameters. But yeah, we have a slight difference because we are uh, given sample autocorrelation function, etc. So let's see a sequence of 100 observations was made from a time series and the following sample autocorrelation functions were observed. The mean and the variance of the sample observations are 1.35 and 0.9 respectively. So, gamma 0 is 0.9. And uh, now that we have gamma 1 which is 0.68, gamma 2 is 0.55, right? So, I can uh, very well uh, write it here, gamma 0 is 0 0.9, gamma 1 is 0 0.68, gamma 2 is 0.55, then I have gamma 3 which is uh, 0 0.3 and gamma 4 which is 0 0.06. So, from here I have the correlation with a time period lag 1 is coming out uh, autocorrelation uh, function rho 1. Let me call this as rho 1 is coming out as gamma 1 divided by gamma 0. Similarly, rho 2 is coming out as gamma 2 divided by gamma 0. Right, this is row 1 and row 2 and probably I can go with uh, row 3 also in the same way, gamma 3 divided by gamma 0 and finally row 4 also goes as gamma 4 divided by gamma 0. Then, what is that I am supposed to calculate the first two values of the partial correlations? I require phi 1 and phi 2. So, we know from the direct formula, phi 1 is nothing but rho 1. So, I will take phi 1 equal to this. And phi 2 for me, yeah, phi 2 for me is nothing but uh, rho 2 minus rho 1 squared divided by 1 minus rho 1 squared. So, I will directly apply the formula here. Right? Rho 2 minus rho 1 squared divided by 1 minus rho 1 squared. So, my pi 2 is coming out to somewhere 0 0.0309. So, that's the first question is directly solved. Estimate the parameter including sigma squared of the following models which are to be fitted to the observed data and can be assumed to be stationary. So, there is an assumption regarding the stationary which means I can very well use the Yule Walker uh, functions on the top of them. So, we have let me take the first one yt equal to a naught plus a1 yt minus 1 plus et. Now, if I am using the Yule, of Yule Walker first doing a covariance between yt and yt. Right, if I do the covariance between yt and yt. Okay, A naught and Y T, it's 0. A1, Y T and Y T minus 1 is gamma 1. And Y T and Y T is nothing but gamma 0. Gamma 0 equal to A1 gamma 1 plus covariance between Y T and E T is sigma squared. So, the first equation I have is gamma 0 equal to A1 gamma 1 plus sigma 1 squared. Similarly, if I take the covariance between yt and yt minus 1, which would be gamma 1 this side and uh, y a1, yt minus 1 and yt minus 1 becomes gamma 0 and yt minus 1 et is uh, 0. So, from here directly I am getting my a1 is nothing but gamma 1 by gamma 0 which is nothing but rho 1. So, a1 is directly known. From these parameters, I am able to get that the A1 is nothing but rho 1 only. Right? And uh, so, A, because this is the relation. So, A1 is nothing but rho 1. Now, we have rho gamma 0 equal to A1 gamma 1 plus sigma squared. Now, I know gamma 1 is A1 uh, gamma 0. 
सो गामा जीरो इक्वल टू ए वन टाइम्स ए वन गामा जीरो प्लस सिग्मा स्क्वायर गामा जीरो इनटू वन माइनस ए वन स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा स्क्वायर now i know gamma 0 is nothing but the variance which is 0.9 and now i got a1 also so from there probably i can find out sigma squared directly which is nothing but gamma 0 times 1 minus a1 squared gamma 0 times 1 minus a1 squared so this becomes my value of uh, sigma squared So sigma squared also came to be known. Now I also require a zero to be known, which I can uh, uh, try to find out using the expected value of y t is equal to a naught plus a one times expected value of y t minus one. And here, if I am assuming that this process is stationary uh, plus expected value of e t, now this is zero because this is a And white noise. So here, if I am saying mu is equal to a naught plus a one mu, so it comes out like mu into one minus a one equal to a naught. So mu is known, which is given in the case one point three five. So from here, I'll get my a zero, which is mu into one minus a one. So mu into one minus a one is giving me a zero is somewhere around point three three. So that's how I've got the parameters through this for the first numerical. Now let me try out the same for the second again going with the Yule Walker itself. Covariance if I'm doing covariance between y t comma y t again here in the second case, it goes as gamma zero equal to a one. Then gamma one plus a two gamma two plus sigma squared. Doing it with the covariance between y t and y t minus one. If I am doing it, so this one becomes gamma one and a one y t minus one y t minus one gamma zero. Plus a two y t minus one y t minus two gamma one plus zero. Similarly, when I am taking gamma two here, covariance between y t and y t minus two, a one gamma one plus a two gamma zero. So these are the values that are there. now we already have the values of gamma 1 gamma 2 we can probably if required we can simplify that also because we have gamma 1 and all so gamma 0 is 0.9 right and here also i can very well uh, substitute see if you see the second equation gamma 1 times 1 minus a2 equal to a1 gamma 0 So from here, I'm getting gamma one equal to a one by one minus a two times gamma zero. Gamma zero is already known, so which means a one by one minus a two is nothing but point seven five, which is row one. Right, row one is coming out to point seven five five. So a one by one minus a two is coming out to this much. And similarly, if required, I can substitute the stuff also. Gamma one is point six eight is equal to gamma zero is point nine a one plus gamma one is point six eight a two. And the second one becomes gamma two is nothing but point five five. Point five five equal to gamma one a one. Point six eight a one plus gamma zero a two. Point nine a two. This is the number. Point nine a one. Point nine a two. 
So from here I should be able to find my A1 and A2 directly. Right, so what I can do is I can multiply the numerator part, let's say with uh, 0 0.68. 0 0.68 times 0 0.9A1, 0 0.68 squared A2. And this I will multiply it with uh, 0 0.9. 0 0.9 times 0 0.68 A1, 0 0.9 squared times A2. So, subtracting will give me, so A2 times 0 0.9 squared minus 0 0.68 squared is equal to 0 0.9 times 0 0.55 minus 0 0.68 squared. Right, so I can very well find out my A2 from this expression. 0 0.9 times 0 0.55 minus 0 0.68 squared. This is 1. This number, I am dividing it. This number, I am dividing it by 0 0.9 squared minus 0 0.68 squared. 0.68 squared resulting in A2 being uh, somewhere around 0 0.09 and from here I know my I can compute my A1 completely right which is nothing but 0.68 see I can get 1 minus A2 from here I can talk about 1 minus A2 is A1 by 0.755 and A2 comes out as 1 minus of A1 by 0.755. So, A1, uh, I have to find out A1, right? A2 is already known. A1 is 1 minus A2 times 0.755. So, this comes out as 1 minus A2 times R1, which is around 0 0.684 is what is coming out for A1. Now, what else is pending? I got my A1, I got my A2 here. Then, uh, what else is pending? So, I have to go back here. Now, I have A1, A2, everything. Gamma 0 is also a known thing. So, from here, we should be able to find out uh, sigma squared. When I am trying out sigma squared is gamma 0, which is 0.9 minus A1 gamma 1. A1 times gamma 1 minus A2 gamma 2. A2 times gamma 2. That is what is coming out to sigma squared around 0.328. And the same logic I can use for mu because it's a, it's, a, it's a stationary kind of a process. Mu equal to A0 plus A1 mu plus A2 mu. So it's directly coming out mu into 1 minus A1 minus A2 equal to A0. So which is directly uh, coming out? A naught is directly coming out here. Mu is 1.35 times 1 minus A1 minus A2. So, A naught is coming out to somewhere close to 0 0.29905. So, all the parameters got, got uh, uh, estimated through this procedure. Okay, explain whether the assumption of stationarity is required very much because we have uh, used uh, various uh, Yule Walker uh, assumptions, Yule Walker equation which is very much applicable uh, only when the stationarity is there. Auto covariance functions which we have uh, used only under the assumption of stationarity of the data. We have equated uh, the mean across which is also an assumption of the stationarity of the data. So, obviously, we require the data to be stationary. Explain whether each of the models in part 2 satisfies the Markov property, which is uh, a Markov property for us is nothing but uh, the current value depends purely on the previous value only. 
one single previous period's value. Here I could see that yt is dependent only on yt minus 1, so that's where it is called as Markov. Whereas here there is a dependency on yt minus 2 also, that's the reason I cannot take this particular process as a Markov process. So, by knowing the auto covariance and correlations related uh, functions, we should be able to estimate the value of the parameters and do the necessary calculations accordingly.